Is buying a water damage restoration franchise worth it? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I've asked myself that question, maybe you have too. In today's video, we're gonna break all of it down. The pros and the cons of a water damage restoration franchise. In this video, I'm actually gonna give you four reasons why you might want to buy into a franchise. And then I'm also gonna give you three reasons why you would not want to buy into a franchise. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will even show you or explain to you what would I do if I was starting all over knowing what I know now. Let's go. All right guys, so let's break it all down. Is it really worth it to buy into a water damage restoration franchise? Yes or no? Well, I'm gonna tell you this, it really kind of depends. And in this video, we're just gonna, I'm gonna start with what are the pros? Why would someone go into it and really go from there? And hopefully you can make up your own mind, okay? Here's four reasons why you'd want to buy into a franchise. Number one, that franchise has some way or some angle to get you work. If that franchise has got an angle for you to get consistent work, that's a reason why you might, might, might want to do it. Now, here's what I'll tell you. That's really gonna be more of a TPA or a program type deal. Franchises will typically try to negotiate deals, okay, with a third party administrator, TPA, or an insurance company and say, hey, our entire franchise is, we want to get on this program, a lacquer to your state farm or whatever, right? Like that's a way that they can try and get on a big list wholesale. And the appeal for the insurance companies is this, they've got one franchisor that's got access to a lot of franchisees and that franchisee will probably like abide by what the franchisor wants. And then, you know, so it's basically you get work at a discount. Okay. Now that's a pro. I'll say this, I don't know how many franchises are actively getting TPA work, like that's one of their things, but some of them have to be or want to be, like, but that, that would be my angle. If I was selling franchises, that would be how I would do it. I would say, hey, we're on this program or this program and this program, and if you want to get you know, jobs from this carrier, this carrier, they only give it to people on this program, we're on that program, so there you go. That's one reason. So here's what I would tell you before you buy into a franchise, make sure that they have an angle for a specific program and make sure you want that work from that program, okay? You may not want it though, but if I've got a list of pro, if you want to do TPA work, if you want to do program work, you have a better likelihood of getting it if you join a franchise that can tell you, yes, we will get that for you, okay? So if you want that work from a TPA or something like that, ask your franchisor, do you guys do this? If they say yes, take them at their word, okay? So that's number one. Number two, a second reason or a second pro of buying into a franchise. You're going to get more of a corporate structure, okay? And what do I mean by that? For a lot of people, it may feel like, hey, yeah, corporate structure, it's really just a bunch of brochures. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of general marketing information like Surf Pros, Big Green Truck. There's some branding already done and all that but like that's done with a franchise and that is not done for you on the independent level, okay? Secondly, there will be some level of support where they will guide you. Like if you go alone, you're gonna get nothing, okay? Unless you hire somebody or, or follow somebody or ask somebody, but when you buy into a franchise, they're going to get you further down that road. It's probably gonna be more like, hey, when you get started, you need a business license. Like they're just gonna help you jump out of the nest, okay? I wouldn't look for them for too much, but they're gonna give you more than you would get otherwise. Does that make sense? So, you know, you will have some level of corporate structure, okay? You will have someone that you can reach out to above you that will probably be like a district manager or some type of corporate rep, and then they will be able to answer some questions for you. So in other words, there's some support, okay? Um, and if you're going independent, you're not gonna have that, all right? So that would be a second reason. If you want more corporate structure and you want more support, then a franchise would give you that, okay? They'll give you that. So that's reason number two. Reason number three, a bigger brand or a perceived brand. So here's what I mean by that. So regardless of how much that franchise actually helps you, you're buying into it. Or if you're even watching this video because you want like to buy into a franchise, you're thinking about it, it's because you perceive that brand to be bigger. You perceive that brand to help you a little more. That's more of a perceived 
value than it is for the end user, but there's value in it, especially for you. So here's what you're gonna get. There's already gonna be brand colors. Surf Pro's got the green truck. Service Master's got the yellow truck. Paul Davis, they already have a logo set up. The structure's in place. They've got a lot of branding materials that you can fall back on that you would have to go buy and pay for otherwise if you're gonna be an independent, okay? Do you really need that out of the gate? No, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you these are these are things that you will pay for it on your own otherwise, and it, there's value in it, there's value in it. So that's gonna be reason number three. It's gonna be more of a brand. You'll already have the brand defined, um, and it'll give you more confidence. Like if they've already got a truck wrap design, you roll up in that wrap, you're gonna feel more professional rolling up in there. You can get that truck wrap without it, you can, but we also paid, I don't know, I paid seven, ten thousand dollars for a branding package. I didn't have to, but I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have someone like me guiding me through this stuff. I'll walk you through that later on other videos. If you want to know more about branding or wraps, drop a comment below. Uh, if you ever want to know something, ask me a question in any comment. I look at them, okay? So, uh, but there is a perceived bigger brand. And here's another thing most franchises their brands look a lot better. If you go hire someone to wrap your truck or you hire someone to design it, you're probably gonna, dude, I've just seen some ugly stuff out there. It's just ugly. And a corporate brand will spend more money. They'll know more about marketing at mass scale than you will, for sure. Like, I feel very comfortable saying that. And if they don't, well, they suck and you're real dumb for buying into it because like that's one of the big benefits. So, uh, you know, make sure their stuff looks good and tight if you're gonna do it, all right? And then here's one. Uh, this, this is probably, I would say, my number one benefit of being in a franchise and it may not be a benefit, but like it would help. It depends on what franchise you're with. But the fourth reason or fourth benefit that you might have from a franchise is help on larger jobs, specifically commercial stuff. So a minute ago, we were talking about perceived brand value, right? Does the customer feel like your brand is big enough? On most residential jobs, they're not gonna know, they're never gonna care. There are some commercial jobs that maybe the maintenance guy or the general manager, they're going, they may be more familiar with it because they will, in, they will go through water damage jobs more frequently than the average customer because they own a business. So if you will probably have an easier time partnering with people, collaborating with people to do commercial jobs. Not you'll get more of it. They don't really get you commercial work. But what I'm telling you is if you land a commercial job, there'll probably be some other guys local to your area, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, two hours away, that you can build a network to help you get commercial jobs. And if that ever happens, then your brands will all look alike, okay? So help on commercial jobs, probably a little easier to have a little brand recognition there. Let me stop that real quick and say, you can still get that same network together as an independent, okay? Because I help my clients put that together if that's what they want. You should, you, you can still, after watching this video, go find some local independent guys and say, hey, if we get a big commercial job, you want to partner up with me? You should do that. You should do that. But anyway, I'm just sharing that with you. The brand won't be as tight. You know, like Surf Pro of Nashville, there might be five franchises in Nashville, all for Surf Pro. Whoever hires that one franchise, they're, I guarantee they're not thinking in the back of their mind, these are five different owners that are showing up. They're feeling like it's all big one thing, even though it's not, and that will help put their mind at ease. So, and that's a legit thing. So like, I hope you like that guys, that is four reasons. So recap, um, if they have an angle on some TPA work or something like that, and you want that, that's one reason. Number two, um, there'll be more corporate structure buying into a franchise than going alone. That's a fact, okay? Number three, um, there will be a bigger perceived like brand for you, maybe your clients. And then number four, help collaborating on commercial jobs. You will be more likely to have that put in place. And if you don't, then you definitely don't want that brand, okay? But those are four reasons that uh, you might want to join into a franchise. And here is actually a bonus fifth reason why you might want to buy into a franchise. They might help you with financing, okay? Um, like gear and whatnot, they may help you get into a uh, gear package, financing a truck or financing the equipment. That You can get that assistance from a franchise at times. I'm not telling you it's a good deal. I'm not telling you it's a good idea, okay? Because it's, you know, you, it may be a higher interest rate. It may lock you in. There may be some fine print that traps you. All that being said, if you're an independent, 
you're not going to have that, right? And the, the, the franchise or may be more willing to extend your terms because they know they're going to get the territory back and they know they're going to get their equipment back if you default on it. Okay. Does that make sense? So hopefully you find that to be helpful. So that being said, now here's three reasons why you would not buy into a franchise. Okay. So number one, it can be very expensive to buy into a franchise. And so this is one deterrent, okay? But it's actually got three little subsets. I'm gonna break them down independently. Um, number one, you've gotta have a lot of startup money to get into it, most likely. You've gotta have a startup cost like a franchise fee. So most franchises will charge anywhere from 10 to 50 grand. Let's call it 40 grand on average, right? They'll charge you $40,000 just for the luxury of buying into the franchise. It's like an initiation fee, okay? And so that is a franchise fee or an upfront startup cost. That can be negotiated probably in many cases, but either way, it's gonna be something. It won't be nothing. And they're going to charge you a franchise fee um, to get in. And that's just the right to become whatever they are. So it's, it can be expensive, right? If you're going independent, you don't have to do that. You don't have to buy into your own company, right? But if you're going to a franchise, you're gonna have a franchise fee and that, that's expensive. So that's one. Part 1B, if you will, of it being expensive is you've got to have cash on hand or liquidity. And here's what they will want. You'll typically have to have X amount of dollars for the franchise fee. So let's say, let's say it's going to just keep the math easy. 50 grand to buy into the franchise and uh, they may charge you 50 grand for equipment. So now you're 100,000 in and they may say you also need to have $75,000 liquidity, okay? And so you might be in for 50 and 50, that's 100 and another 75, that's 175. These are, these are actual, uh, whatever, these are bar graphs, I guess. So, um, but those are three different things, right? So like it might, it might, you might need to have 175 grand or at least access to 75, 50 to buy in to the franchise, 50 to get some gear and, um, and then 75 for liquidity. You need to be liquid. We talked about that earlier, but that being said, you don't have those same barriers. Um, you can start a restoration company with less than that if you're going independent. And so whatever, it's expensive. So that's, part 1B of it being expensive, right? It's because you've got to have liquidity requirements, right? Lastly, and here is the biggest deterrent in my view, it's the ongoing royalties. Most of these franchises, they'll not only charge you upfront to get started, and then they'll not only charge you um, like, you know, the liquidity stuff when you get starting together, but some of them will mandate you spend X amount to them for marketing, like 300 bucks a month or a thousand dollars a month or whatever. But sometimes they'll mandate you spend X amount for marketing and they'll charge you that. Um, and then they'll do some marketing for you. Uh, or in other cases, they will, uh, they will charge you a royalty right off the top. Some of the ones that I've seen, I've seen them, um, as high as 12%, some of them of gross, 12% gross, bro. That's a lot. Okay. So if you're, if you're making a million dollars in mitigation, that means they want 112 grand ongoing, ongoing in perpetuity. Okay. And that's a lot of freaking money. Okay. Um, so 12% is probably on the high end, but I don't know of any of them that are less than 4%, you know? And so, you know, for whatever that's worth, right. That's still 40 grand every year to be in their ecosystem. So if you're going to be in the business for 10 years and you're going to be making a million bucks, that's $400,000 you're paying into the franchise in addition to whatever you got started. That is very expensive, okay? That is very expensive. So you've got the buy-in cost, the liquidity, and then the ongoing royalties. That's a killer, dude. That's very, very expensive. So that's the one reason why you wouldn't. It's very expensive, okay? Now, here's the second reason why you would not buy into a franchise. Reason number two, most franchises do not give you what you need in sales and marketing. I'll say it again differently. Most franchises still struggle with sales and marketing. And my guess, most of the people that are watching this video, if you're thinking about buying into a franchise, you're thinking that's gonna be covered. And that ain't true, okay? That is simply not true. Um, they might help you in some degree better than you would otherwise, but like, it's not that easy. It's the hardest part of any business is the sales and marketing is the hardest part, getting the customer, getting the jobs. And that is the most important part. And they give you some level of support, but in most cases it's not adequate. Okay. And here's what I can tell you. I've had people in my ecosystem, clients of mine. Um, we also coach and help restoration companies grow their business, water damage only. I have had guys from all franchises from 
all dry rainbows, serve pro, Paul Davis, restoration one, like you name it, dude. They, none of them, I've had people from every franchise come into my ecosystem and my program, 1-800 water damage, and they all benefit from it. So whatever franchise you're thinking about, you can still learn a lot from us, but you, you don't want to buy into the franchise and think it's going to cover your sales and marketing because that ain't going to happen. It just ain't going to happen. Most franchises know very little about the sales and marketing. They just really do. And if you don't believe me, try me. Okay. I will, I will, uh, we'll kick their teeth in. I don't know what they think. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're pretty decent at the branding and selling franchises because that's what they do mostly is they sell franchises. Again, the biggest problem with buying a franchise or why you would not is you do not get the sales and marketing support that you need in order to operate uh, a multi-million dollar water damage restoration company. You just don't. Some of the guys hit that mark, but like, golly, I I've had market leaders, some of the biggest franchises, right? Some of the like every franchise you can think of, whether it's Restoration One, Van Clean or Dirt, whatever they are, right? Like there's several of them. I've I've been on the calls and spoke to some of the highest grossing revenue guys about helping them with their sales and marketing and water damage. And what does that tell you? That means they're not getting that adequate support. It doesn't mean it's not worth it. I'm just telling you for sales and marketing for water damage, you are not going to get the best out there. We have the best, there's no doubt about that, okay? And I don't care if you think that's a plug or not, it's just the truth, okay? That's my jam, baby. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's helpful, okay? There, I already gave you reasons to buy into the franchise. Uh, why you wouldn't is the sales and marketing stuff's not there. Now, here's the third reason why you probably would not want to buy into a water damage restoration franchise. You're not as profitable. You're simply not as profitable. And the reason why you're not as profitable is because you're paying the ongoing royalty rates, et cetera, okay? And you may be bound by some other guidelines about what you can charge, what you can't charge, what you can do or can't do. But at the end of the day, you are not gonna be as profitable as part of a franchise as you would be if you were an independent. That's just a fact. Somebody may argue otherwise, but like, it's just simply not true. When you're paying someone a royalty, you are less profitable than you would be otherwise. Straight up. And I've got to give you one more bonus reason why you wouldn't buy a franchise is exiting your business, selling your business. Um, you're not, you're selling a territory, not a business. Whereas if you're an independent, you're selling a business. If you're in a franchise, you can't just sell it to anybody. You got to sell it to somebody that wants that franchise in that territory. Does that make sense? So it's a much more captive. I mean, you might want to view that as a benefit, right? But if you're trying to exit a Surpro franchise or a Paul Davis franchise, if you if you sell it at all, it's going to be because someone else chose to buy your territory and you ain't going to get none for it. I'm just telling you straight up. Okay. So those are the reasons why you might want to buy a franchise and why you wouldn't buy a franchise. Now let's get down to the brass tacks. What would I do if I were starting all over again? Number one, you have to take this with a grain of salt. I did not buy into a franchise personally, um, but the biggest reason is I didn't have the money. If I'd had the money, I probably would have bought into a franchise. I probably would have, seriously. For me, I would have thought it would have gotten me further faster, but I didn't because I couldn't. So, but knowing that now, what would I do now? I will go independent. You should go independent and here's why. You can always buy into a franchise later. You can always buy into a franchise later. They're easy to get into. They're not easy to get out of, okay? It's like a marriage. Once you are in, you're in. You can always buy in later, but you can't get out as easy. Does that make sense? And so that's the primary reason. It's not even about the profitability or any of that. Those are all additional reasons, but there's other resources out there. And when I got into the game in restoration, there, there wasn't this YouTube, like nobody was doing this on YouTube. And I'm still probably one of the very few that have a very good channel in my view all right there's a few but not many right there's some good dudes out there um not casting any shade to those fellows but like there's not much on youtube and there wasn't anything on facebook when i got started okay and so i've paid a lot of consultants and joined a lot of programs to grow my restoration company and i took the best of all that and that's what i'm giving here to you guys okay for free and I paid a lot more than just that. I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching and consulting, over six figures just in restoration myself, okay? And I'm giving you the best stuff here right now, all right? So anyway, all that to be said, there's different things that you can do, uh, but if I were starting over again now, I would not. I would I would save the money. I would buy into the franchise later if you need to. Find someone that wants to that has gone where you want to go, it's done what you want to do, and follow them. Okay. And if you want water damage, 
we can help you with that. I would tell you to follow me. We've got we've got stuff fifty thousand dollars a year all the way down to to free these videos. Um, but our core program and stuff is as cheap as five hundred dollars with a money back guarantee. I would tell you start with some of those and then and then and then try it from there. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so. Thank you. Do one more thing for me, guys. Um, if you like this, drop a comment, like the video, and then share it on social media. Go share it on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever else. It would mean a lot to me. We'll see you guys in the next video.